Good morning, everyone. This is Teddy Kekstet from Forex Trading Unlocked with the Forex Market Breakdown for you and sponsored by Nadex. So let's uh, get through some accounting first. We can get this page to move. There we go. So we have our Nadex disclaimer, just reminding you that this webinar is for information purposes, educational purposes only. Okay, so with that, let's now jump to the economic calendar. So we have some actually key economic releases that are going to impact uh, or may impact our major currencies, uh, not just the US dollar, but the Euro, the yen and the Canada. So today we have the Euro consumer confidence. This is a big number because uh, we've had a mixed batch over the past couple of weeks when it comes to uh, Germany and the whole Euro zone on uh, manufacturing production and um, uh, some other key economic numbers. So it'll be interesting to see how as we end wind down the summer and everyone comes back from holiday in Europe, uh, what the tone is going to be as we move forward into September and the last month of the third quarter. For the US dollar, we have uh, today, we have the Fed's uh, Barkin is going to be speaking today. So um, I think that it's probably just gonna be a reiteration of what Powell said last week, um, hammering it into the, at least, I don't know why the news can't get this mindset that the Fed is done cutting rates, even though everyone's promoting saying that it's gonna be cutting rates soon and whatever, that's probably not on the table for at least three months if it happens um, in the, this year yet. So then we have tomorrow, <clears throat> we have Tokyo CPI and fresh food. This number is actually kind of important um, moving forward, uh, setting the tone for the yen. Also, uh, we have a uh, buy signal that has occurred in the, the Japanese uh, US dollar yen trade. Uh, and we will see how it reacts to the number tomorrow if that reinforces a potential uh, turn. The overall trend is down for US dollar yen. However, we may be on the verge of a nice little corrective uh, move. We'll take a look at that chart in a little bit. Tomorrow, we also have US GDP, um, another big number for the dollar that can influence a lot of the other currencies. And then we have for a euro, we have German unemployment and harmonized index of consumer prices. That's a pretty long word there, right? Or a uh, thing. So yeah, the German unemployment number <clears throat> will definitely be important to see how, um, if there is a slowdown, that is, well, we know there is a slowdown in Europe, but not necessarily a recessionary thing. They're still firing on all cylinders too. So to come off of where they're at, it's, is probably just a slowdown. Um, so let's see if unemployment starts to start upticking, then that may start to um, change the um, realities of what the slowdown is. Remember, we have Brexit coming up, and uh, it's not just the pound in the UK that are affected by uh, Brexit, but also um, the EU countries also. And then we have on Friday for the euro, we have CPI, and for Canada, we have GDP. So here we have GDP um, for both uh, the US dollar and the Canada coming up <clears throat> over the next uh, few days. GDP obviously being one of the top economic uh, forecasting numbers um, every month. And uh, this also is huge because uh, the US dollar and the Canada, Canadian dollar, obviously we're in the same trade zone. So for the North American trade um, uh, variables, as far as for those currency relationships, we, we might start to see a little bit of a move going on. Um, the Canada, um, US dollar, Canada bull, is it gonna continue higher or fall apart? Well, we'll take a look at the levels and see what we have going on. Now, one thing we don't have up here for economic numbers is the British pound. Um, however, we have enough going on with uh, Big Bad Boris that we don't need to have any economic numbers because I think that they're gonna be kind of um, overshadowed by it with the, uh, the brashness of what's going on. So we had the economic summit um, last week, the G7. Uh, it was Boris's first time <clears throat> as uh, the uh, prime minister going, over going overseas, <laughs> going to Europe. He met in France first, and then he went to uh, Germany, and then they had the uh, G7 uh, meeting, which obviously we know is full of all kinds of different details um, as far as Brexit and what was talked about there. And I think it was pretty much just supporting the line in the sand. So that being said, Boris Johnson uh, just recently prorogued um, Parliament, well, there's your word of the day. So just in case somebody doesn't know if it's a real word or not, um, it is, it means to just continue a session of Parliament or Legislative Assembly without dissolving it. So in order for Brexit to happen on the 31st, and we're gonna get into the charts and show this, uh, 
this is the first step to Boris is really not only that he put the line in the sand, now he's already thrown the first punch, um, saying that the hardliners that want to extend the Brexit talks and not make it happen, um, they're out of luck. Okay, so US dollar Canada, let's first talk about this because it's close to home, it's the North American trade zone. As you can see, um, the market here has been wedging and going a little bit sideways over the past week and a half. Uh, we did have a short-term sell signal, which where this downward sloping resistance comes into this uh, high right here, which we have as a um, pivot at $1.3347. Now, right now, I have this big elliptical area, the limbo zone. So why is this the limbo zone? Well, uh, I don't think that we're going to have, if we get a breach to the upside, I don't think you're going to get much of a follow through. Obviously, the US dollar Canada is in a, uh, a bullish posture. Um, the slope of the trend is not that high. Um, and I think that if we, the, the US dollar Canada may remain positive, but it's most likely going to stay inside a range around this area. So the 133.47 down to 131 right here. These would be two boundaries where I think they're going to start to see a containment for the market. So we'll see if the bulls can start to, uh, like today, this chart was just done um, a little while ago this morning. But the bulls are trying to make a little run at resistance. Um, but we have this downward sloping resistance, which is long term coming up the weekly um, chart where it's containing and capping the move right now, or at least pausing it. Um, so does it mean that the market's going to reverse here and start to come? Um, crashing back below at about 30 here, where we have this other downside pivot? Probably not. I think that uh, right now you're most likely going to be contained in this little area here. Uh, as far as the bull, you can see that the slope of this, we're kind of going sideways. So by attrition between upward sloping support and downward sloping resistance, we're looking at it kind of um, moving into a range trade conditions, or at least we're set up for that kind of scenario. Obviously, whether it happens or not, we shall see. And that's why the GDP numbers for both the US dollar and the Canada are really big over the next couple of days. So will it um, cause US dollar strength or will it cause US dollar weakness um, and also Canadian strength and Canadian weakness? So um, right now, as far as geopolitically uh, influences on the fundamental aspects, uh, the tariff tit for tat that's been going on even with US and Canada seems to be kind of quiet. So I don't think that any of that is gonna be really an impact on anything right now. Um, so except for major fu fundamental releases, we're probably not going to, oops, I don't know why that, sorry about that, um, why we would get a move that would be exacerbated. So for um, directional traders, I think you're gonna to start to see a nightmare happen. So what you could probably look at here is that we have this recent uh, higher move high, and yesterday, it looks like we set a new swing low. That would be if the bullish trend um, is going to remain intact, then we should start to pressure these, uh, this last high, take out this uh, $1.3347 pivot, pivot, and then look for a challenge of $1.3394. That's about all I see as far as even if we get a rally. I don't think you're going to see any major extension of the trend. Um, and if anything, we're probably going to start to look to settle into a little bit of a sideways trade. Um, remember, Brexit uh, does impact us just like and now that we have a hard line that's been uh, drawn. Uh, the question is, what's going to happen with the pound and what's going to happen with the euro? Are they going to start to move and fling the dollar around? Um, I think with the euro, we'll get to that chart, probably not so much. Uh, but the pound um, could start to cause some big uh, waves with the U.S. dollar. So we'll get to that chart as well. So right now we have, um, we're looking at these numbers here with these pivots, this limbo area. Um, so for range traders or for people who are looking for boundaries, uh, you, this is a high probable containment area right now. So I would not expect much follow through. Um, we have <clears throat> the numbers for the US dollar, um, more importantly would be tomorrow and then obviously Canada on Friday. Um, they could possibly neutralize each other. Uh, so that would mean that if the dollar starts to get a nice rally off of GDP and Canadian GDP um, could just swing it around. So be very careful with your direction here with your points. And oops, we'll go back again. Uh, the uh, mouse is acting a little goofy. Sorry about that. Uh, and that's where I would look at. Um, 
uh, directionally. I think that unless you get below 131.84 here, right below the elliptical um, range, I don't think you're going to get much selling pressure. Uh, the trend is still bullish. So uh, unless we can generate another swing low, obviously, which would um, keep that last swing high in place at $1.3347, then I can see where we might start, this might be a corrective mode that will um, unfold as we move into September after the holiday markets. And that's the last thing I want to talk about as far as this trade also um, for the US dollar Canada. We are heading into Labor Day weekend in the US. We're coming into the end of summer for everybody. Um, so the the ability to for moves to manifest may start to really um, decrease as we head into uh, Thursday and Friday. We know that in the U.S., a lot of people start to take off on Thursday and Friday. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And since it is the ending of the summer, and people are aware of it um, globally, they may have a little bit less interest in trading um, as we uh, head into this uh, weekend ahead of us. So um, that's another thing to think about that may support range trade. Uh, type of activity for this market. Uh, so that's, we're done with the Canada and it's not um, as uh, hard in the news as far as Brexit or um, China. Like, you know, right now the US dollar Canada is something that really people don't talk about very much. And it's because there's this is boring compared to everything else. Um, but we'll see what happens um, on Friday with the GDP. So use caution being a bull um, and even as a bear, I don't think you have much to look forward to. Uh, so we'll, we'll go on now to the Euro US dollar. So we have the timeline there, the Brexit, October 31st. Um, we have had a slightly negative reaction <clears throat> to uh, over the past couple of days for the Euro. And we can see that today this chart was um, brought uh, uh, made up just a little while ago before we started the webinar. Today's trading is kind of uh, lackluster. Um, the range is something I want you to look at. Uh, yesterday's range was very tight. Uh, we had a sell-off on Monday, reversing Friday's gains. And as of today, we've pretty much given up um, most of uh, Friday's gains. Friday set a new uh, higher move low um, after we had set a lower move high. So does that mean that the trend is starting to reverse? Is Euro strength going to come into the market? That's a tough one. With Brexit going in the way it's going on right now, I think that we probably will start to see <clears throat> a range trade develop, I mean, a tighter range trade develop in the Euro US dollar. We know that it's been in a, basically a range trade for the past eight months and definitely contained within the three and a half dollar range for the past. Uh, uh, four months. Uh, so now I think we're going to just remain in this little area here unless there's a major shakeup with those numbers we talked about. Now, the European unemployment, <clears throat> if that gets an uptick, then uh, Euro weakness may start to manifest itself and we will probably see the bears take, a, take out these lows by a little bit, but not very much. I don't think that's going to be very excessive. Um, now, if the Euro unemployment comes out very positive, um, as far as Euro strength, don't get overzealous on that. Now, what we do know is that um, Friday we set, at least right now, a short-term higher move low. So you can see our pivots here. We have a dollar ten fifty-one as a downside pivot, which would be off of our low from Friday, um, and we have uh, the green pivot here, which is a major uh, weekly and monthly uh, pivot point of a buck eleven eighty-three. So below a buck 11.83, I think you're going to definitely see some resistance. If we can get back above there, you can see the downward sloping resistance coming down from this uh, previous high over here. Um, and so if we get a rally that can breach this downward sloping resistance, then we got a good shot at making a challenge of this 111.83. And then after that, well, that's the questionable part. Will we get follow through? So that's where I think that the unemployment number on Friday for the euro, if it comes out uh, very positive, uh, followed by also the GDP numbers, um, if they somehow are negative for especially the US dollar, in that case, I think you're going to start to see uh, a little lift for the um, euro US dollar. We want this market as well. I think that directionally, you have to really use um, uh, tight risk. So I would right now, since we have the uh, fundamental higher move low. Uh, there's not any real buy signal or sell signal to uh, generate any type of real outlook for a long-term move for this market. Uh, that's just the way it's been. We know that the 
euro US dollar has been caught in this range trade. So you got to trade the pivots. Um, once again, this is kind of like a containment here between uh, the 110.51 here from the low from Friday. And then we have the uh, 111.83 there, the green line. That's where I think you're going to see as we go into the rest of the week in the holiday markets. This is where we'll probably stay within that range again. Uh, only if we can take out that 111.83, the, the high from Monday actually, which we set a higher move high off of Friday, we fell apart. So if we can then take that high out, well then we have a new swing high. Maybe we get some uh, some bullish momentum that might get us up, back up towards this 112.50 uh, one area. But then, like I said, we're coming into holiday markets, thin markets. I don't think you're going to get so much follow through, but that would be a bullish to neutral indication that the euro US dollar is um, maintaining strength. Now, look above, if you look at the green line here on this chart, we've kind of, it's kind of like a sine wave, if you remember sine waves from math class or science class. Um, we've had the bulk of trading for a month and a half going into uh, uh, the middle of the summer where we were trading above this 111.83 area trying to challenge the 113, upper 113 handle area. Uh, that has obviously been um, a thing of the past because we fell below that pivot and it seems that right now it's very hard for the Euro to gain any traction. Um, with this Brexit uh, line here, now remember we talked about, we have our new word of the day, prorogue. So what does that mean for the Euro and the pound right now and the Euro US and the US dollar, which is part of this triangle. So with that being said, um, the, the hardliners that don't want Brexit to happen on October 31st and um, want to pretty much throw out the whole, any type of economic uh, agreements, uh, they're kind of out of luck. So I, this is the first time I've ever really experienced uh, something like this is, um, on a fundamental basis. So I don't know um, what kind of reactions to even remotely expect. Uh, but I do believe that if, uh, since this hard line has been drawn, uh, is, even though it's generating pound weakness right now, is uh, going to accelerate the trend moving towards October 31st. Now, the funny thing is, what's the trend been for especially this year with the euro US dollar in the wake of all these Brexit talks? It's been sideways. So, so maybe if history is any indication of the past, we'll have more of that. And that gets into us where we're looking at these pivots. So um, let's look at the uh, fundamentals again as far as uh, um, a swing trade. Uh, we've made a newer, higher move low. And then if you're looking at the intraday basis, and this is where um, uh, some of your day traders uh, might start to have some opportunities. Uh, where we had uh, Friday, we spiked high, a little bit higher with a higher move high, and now we're weak. So if the Euro US dollar bulls can start to turn around today, um, especially tomorrow and into Friday, then a challenge of Monday's high is very, very likely. Then we take out the uh, downward sloping resistance that's been going down. Uh, you can see the sloping um, from the beginning of, uh, uh, or the end of uh, June through July into August and keeping this market under pressure. Maybe we get a rally above that. If we take out the high from Monday, we're going to be challenging that line. And then if we can uh, breach that downward sloping resistance, that 111.83 pivot is looking like to be uh, taken out by the bulls. Uh, now, the trading around there, that's a pivot point. So there could be just a lot of um, range trading around with 111.83 where it's just Probably above one, the 112 handle or coming back below the 111.83 a little bit. So we'll see how this high that was take, made uh, two days ago on Monday, whether or not it holds. If it doesn't, then I think it's it's positive in the sense that we are trading you know, most likely see a neutral to higher trade as we head into the fall with the Euro US dollar. Um, the, the main thing is uh, the dollar itself. Um, is it, is it strong or is it that these other currency, currencies are weak right now? So I think that uh, since this hard line, uh, the stance that Boris uh, Johnson has taken, uh, as we move through, now there's a September 1st deadline as well. When's that? Well, that's next week. That's over Labor Day weekend. So that the fact that he's been the way he has for the past week and then today uh, has prorogued the, the parliament, 
then now it's just a matter of going through motions and hitting the first uh, topics for September 1st. So that being said, if as the weakness in the pound is in there in the market today, and we as we head into the weekend, once we start uh, next week and the um, last month of the third quarter, that's when we might start to see a little turn in the currencies where dollar, it may not be dollar weakness that comes in or necessarily um, Euro strength, um, but our, our euro weakness, but the pound itself may start to wag these around. But until then, it looks like we're going to be set up for more of a range trade. So just to wrap up the euro US dollar again, uh, right now, I think it's kind of like the Canadian trade It's wedging and looking more like a neutral uh, range trade. So for bears, unless it falls below 110.51, I would be very careful. I would look to um, look for selling opportunities into rallies um, before you jump in the waters. And for bulls right now, you kind of have a uh, uh, the swing low from Friday. If those numbers are solid and that bounce really means something, well, then you have a low risk uh, level to uh, be a buyer against. However, I would not be um, once if we do take out that low from uh, Friday, that would be, be a very foolish place, I think, to be long because obviously the trend is your friend. The bears will be pressing support, looking for new move lows. And especially with what's going on with the weekend trade and with Boris uh, Johnson, maybe we're gonna get another leg lower for the Euro US dollar. All right, so with that, let's now go to the pound. Look at this, how it's been acting today. So the pound gave us a buy signal a couple of weeks ago that um, was kind of a grind higher, which is what we were talking about for the past couple of weeks because it's just like, it's all political, blah, blah, blah. But then last week we had that little rally. And then uh, going into this week, we just, it was holding. It looked like we were starting to um, set another base as it legs up uh, into, the, into the fall. So this bullish move right now, is it a correction or is it for real? So now that the market yesterday, and today have been butting up this downward sloping resistance, this blue line here. So as you see today's trading, it definitely sold off really sharply. That was when Boris um, put the, the pirogue into place and it sold off pretty hard. And now it's uh, right around the middle of the session's trade, kind of at the bottom of the range that's been trading over the past couple of days. So was it a knee-jerk reaction? Is it the beginning of a reversal back to uh, the lows and uh, assumption of the trend? Or are we going to just have a little pause for the cause before the bulls make a challenge of this uh, downward sloping resistance, take it out and then make a run at 123.75? So upside breakout toward is what I have on this chart. So was it or was it that was it not because of the question mark there? So I think that this the the immediate reaction today is what's caused this harsh sell-off. Um, we have to see as the U.S. markets open and the world starts to react to these um, issues. Now, we noticed that the Euro U.S. dollar, the range is super, super tight today. So we've had a little bit of swinging around from Friday and Monday. Now, in the wake of this news, which definitely the uh, Boris Johnson's uh, stance like this impacts the EU um, and definitely impacts the euro. So, and right now that's in a tight range trade. So think about that. The euro and the pound, two of the biggest components, uh, currencies versus the dollar, one has a radical range today and um, movement and one has stayed very, very tight. It's kind of weird. It's like almost like the euro US dollar has lost its pulse this year. Um, <laughs> you know, to kind of put it into medical terms, you know, like it's just like, does this thing have a heartbeat where, you know, is it alive? Um, no matter what hits it economically um, through the news or fundamentally through the news, uh, it just doesn't seem to get any follow through or reaction. At least the pound, we've had a trend and we have something to go with. So that being said, uh, right now, I think that today you have to kind of pay attention to what's going on with uh, the initial reaction, but uh, wait and see until tomorrow um, and into Friday if you're going to start to really, if you're not in a trade right now, I'd be very careful with it. Um, since the Euro US dollar is not moving, we need to almost see if the dollar can get uh, either hit or um, not. So with that, let's look at the pivots here. We have our uh, green line here at about 25.49. So that is a uh, major weekly, monthly uh, 
pivot line. So if the bulls can breach this buck 2375 here, where I, um, which would take out the recent uh, higher move high, then I think we got a good chance at uh, elevating ourselves back up to that area into that um, kind of where it will probably set another basing range uh, where it has been that buck 2549 that green pivot down to that first purple dash line at a buck 2375 there's been a lot of trading over the past in the past in this little area right here so uh for the bulls to stretch a rally and a corrective rally into that area that's a good spot for it to run out of gas now right now if you as you see how the market has been butting up against this downward sloping blue line it's perfect as far as uh channeling lower for um the trend so if it, for the market to fall apart like it did today and be negative and then have more negative follow through and start to look to pressure that dollar 20 um 16 pivot at the, where the low was from a few weeks ago that would be uh the perfect scenario as far as a perfect picture if we were to draw it up in this pot and the, the bears were to keep a uh, uh symmetrical trend lower However, we know that markets aren't that perfect, and especially with what's going on now, if you look at it on a daily basis from yesterday making a higher move high and today's um, higher move low, uh, we have something to go on right there. Uh, I think these are your two critical pivots. So yesterday's high and today's low probably in the short run are, uh, is going to be the critical range. So above yesterday's high, we could probably look for a challenge of that dollar twenty three seventy five level, um, and only if we get above there, um, then I would be very careful. So if you're, let's say you're a short, you're a bear here. If you're uh, looking to look for a selling opportunity, that buck twenty three seventy five area might might be a good area if you're that aggressive as of a bear. Um, if you think that the trend is going to um, resume itself, this is just a corrective rally. Um, however, if this is a sign of the time for the next month, like you got to realize that uh, at first the pound reacted ne negatively to Boris Johnson being the prime minister and things that are going on. So the, the world may not like what he's doing and part of England may not like what he's doing, but he is doing what he's doing and he's moving forward towards Brexit. So once again, we have the October 31st line in the sand drawn over there um, and we're, it's very likely that um, after today's reaction, uh, we're going to see we have that September 1st deadline next week. It's coming up, but we know that Boris right now is full throttle towards Brexit in October 31st. So will that support the pound? Uh, it's very possible that this correction that we've started, um, we might see a little slide and then actually this may be the beginning of the turn as we head into Brexit. Um, remember that Brexit's been postponed so many times, and what's been going on that whole time? The pound US dollar has been breaking. It's helped to drive the trend lower. So now if we have this line in the sand drawn, and now Boris is doing proroguing, that's our word of the day, prorogued uh, parliament, uh, this is no messing around, folks. I mean, I, it does, I don't know if you, what more anyone needs to see or understand to have a clue as to what's going on here. Brexit's happening. It's happening October 31st. So um, it would be a shock to me if it doesn't go through. Now it's going to be a hard Brexit, but you know what? That's how life is. Sometimes you got to have short term pain for long term gain. So, and this uh, breaking away from the EU and regaining sovereignty, it's the real deal. So, what will that do? Uh, well, I don't know. In the long run, we'll let it support or weaken the pound. Uh, but right now we're, we have issues with the U.S. dollar, <clears throat> so it's I think it's going to be hard for the pound U.S. dollar to maintain its overall bearish posture. I think right now we're looking at probably since we have the swing high from yesterday and a swing low from today. Um, well, fundamentally on a, a technical basis, you have higher move high and higher move low. Let's see what works. Um, so for you uh, bulls and bears. Uh, for bears, I think if we uh, definitely take out the low of today or head back to the lows today, that's an indication that we might start to see the uh, pound US dollar grind lower and fall apart for the next few sessions into the uh, September trade. However, um, if, if we can get above, <laughs> if today's negative action does come back 
especially with the rally over the next couple of days to make a higher move high, that's a very bullish sign for the pound overall. Um, now, is it going to rocket up to that buck twenty five forty nine and then go higher? I doubt it. I think it means that this short term correction um, may have been may have put in a short term bottom and be the beginning of a sideways to higher trade as we keep on ticking down the top the clock, which, you know, two months, eight weeks in the market that goes by pretty quickly. So key pivots here to look out for um, right now. Uh, we'll look at yesterday's high and today's low and see what kind of uh, move we have. If you're a bull, look for a challenge in that buck 2375 pivot once we take out, make a new swing high. Uh, and then it'll probably have a little bit of a tough time there uh, as it gets close to there. I would expect then for it to start to digest for a little bit before any type of real true bullish uh, continuation would have occur. Um, and then if we take out today's low and go back to the lows, well, that kind of puts things off um, to at least um, maintain a sideways to lower posture. Remember the overall trend is lower. So this downward sloping blue line, if it contains the, the, the correction that we've um, had over the past couple of weeks, then the trend is your friend. Look for it to continue to buck up uh, against that blue line and I'll maybe make a uh, break, uh, breaking scenario where it might make a run for that 120.64, uh, 2016 level from uh, the low from a few weeks ago. I don't think that that's most really going to be the scenario. I think it's more of a digestive trade that was going to happen. So we'll see what kind of, how Boris shakes things up uh, over the next uh, couple of days. Obviously, he's uh, had his first trip to uh, Europe as prime minister, and what a character this guy is turning out to be. I'm not, uh, I'm not English, uh, don't really follow that much of uh, UK politics, except for where it pertains to the markets. Um, but this guy's actually <laughs> becoming quite entertaining, uh, just because I find it amusing, because it's such a difference for to see the passion come out of someone that's English, and you're like, I thought these people were really uh, reserved. <laughs> um, but I guess when, once they get riled and agitated, uh, here we go. So we'll see what the Boris show brings as we move forward into the fall. So right now, uh, key off yesterday's high and today's low as your pivots. And remember, we made a swing high, um, higher move high yesterday. And if today's low holds, especially over the next couple of days, then we, by attrition, we'll probably pierce, uh, we'll go through the downward sloping resistance line, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the overall bears are gone. So with that being said, let's move on to our next chart, which is the US dollar Swiss. So we looked at the, uh, we started in the uh, American trade zone with the US dollar Canada. And even still, it's kind of funny with all these markets, it doesn't seem that there's really much US dollar strength or weakness in anything. So is it because we're end of summer and heading into holiday markets with, for Labor Day weekend? Uh, partially, it could be. Um, but I don't know. I think there's so much news in the marketplace is that it's starting to get uh, overwhelmed. Everything's canceling itself out, even with the Chinese uh, tariff war that's going on. So um, what is going on with the Swiss? So as far as flight to quality and strength, um, now notice that we've had the, the pound right there where uh, it's uh, been railing and has a little bit of negative action today. And you can see that the Swiss it's very neutral. Now it's been positive over the past couple of days. And it's pretty funny because if you look at the chart here, we have the downward sloping blue line and the upward sloping blue line. So from the downward sloping blue line, we have those uh, the high from back at the, you know, just before August, uh, end of July. And then it had a high that was set last Friday that the market fell off. So it looked like the US dollar um, Swiss was, especially with that radical sell off, it looks like it is definitely kind of bearish to uh, lower uh, as far as uh, the market sentiment is concerned. But then look what happened uh, on Monday. We had a uh, complete reversal of fortune. The market gap lower, um, set a, a newer, uh, higher uh, swing low, and then bounced off it very strongly, uh, settling pretty much in the 50% mark of the day's trading range from Friday and continued yesterday higher. And it's today even still, well, I don't know where it is right now currently, but um, before the video, it was slightly higher. So what does that mean? So US dollar Swiss, um, is there flight to quality in the dollar right now? Or is that what's this, um, is Swiss weakness gonna start to uh, 
settle into the market as we have um, these Brexit things uh, going on? Um, no, I don't think so. I think that this is where range traders, you can uh, start to look at that swing high from Friday and the swing low from Monday, uh, which would put you at that uh, nine, that first uh, purple dash line, the upper one, which is 98.76, and the lower one is 97.13. Now remember, we were all on the parity, parity, parity talk for uh, on and off this year. I don't hear anybody talking about parity. So as far as US dollar strength, um, it looks like it's starting to wane uh, against a lot of the major currencies because look at what we're talking about with Brexit. Even if the trend right now continues as it has in the short run, it's starting to show that um, the fact that we have a Brexit solution, and we, even if it's not a pretty one, um, we have a timeline. That's why on all these charts, except for the Canada, I put this line in the sand from October um, 31st. Um, now, what happens that? This, what does that mean? So now that we're making progress, the, the Brexit hasn't happened yet. It does have to happen for us to really start to set a tone for any major trend for these currencies. Um, but as we move forward, it's very likely that we're going to see a contained range trade uh, may just stay for the next couple of weeks. Um, so if you're a directional outright trader, I think it's going to be a little rough on you for both bulls and bears. I mean, yesterday, uh, Friday's sell signal, that had, I mean, on a short-term basis, that would be very bearish. And then here it turned around, I mean, like a balloon underwater on Monday, heading back up into today's trade. So what do you make of that one? I mean, a major sell, reversal sell signal, then followed by a major reversal buy signal. That's on a daily basis. That means intraday trading, you've, you've had some good swings over the last uh, week and a half. Now we're heading into holiday markets. I think that that's going to dry up. It's going to start, I think volume's going to be thin. And that may be one of the reasons why we've had um, such a radical move on Friday and even on Monday. Um, we're dealing with thin volumes in both the, uh, the cash forex markets, the futures markets, the futures options markets. Um, it's just, and also even and on the, the Nadex options, I don't know as far as volume, how that's been um, going into uh, the end of the summer. Uh, but I think that's definitely one of the things that's putting a, a play or keeping these markets contained. We've looked at uh, uh, the U.S. market, uh, U.S. dollar Canada, and we've looked at now the third currency in the eurozone. And what do we have to say? It's going nowhere right now. It just looks like that. So let's look at one last market here. We have the U.S. dollar yen. Now, this is one where we can actually see a potential move. Um, we have a piercing line buy signal that happened the other day. And this might be the market that tells us if the uh, European currencies are going to get a move. U.S. dollar strength looks like it's about to uh, show its head in this market. Uh, we had a agreement made between uh, U.S. and Japan on uh during the G7 meeting, which uh, was kind of a surprise because it, thought, it looked like us in Asia were having nothing but issues and even some with Japan, but an agreement is on the table. And now this neutral zone, you see I have two ovals here. So that piercing line right there is a buy signal. Um, you see these pivots here, the yellow lines, and then you have this purple up side pivot at a buck six, uh, 106, 964. <clears throat> it looks like with this uh, buy signal that the bulls are gonna have a good shot at challenging that area over the next week or two, which takes it out of the neutral zone. Uh, a breach of that uh, high of 106.96 would have, uh, I'm targeting that bullish target range up there. Now you notice I have a 50 day moving average uh, descending into that bullish target range. Um, that's going to be dropping towards that key pivot at 106.96 over the next few sessions. So if we get a rally from the US dollar yen that challenges that um, uh, moving average line as well as that pivot, you could have a, a that could stop the market and contain it and, and maintain a now remember this is a bearish uh, uh, trend right now overall long term, short term, and intermediate. However, if the short term trend can uh, pierce that. Uh, level, then we'll have had a, high, a lower move low with a higher move high, neutralizing the um, current trend lower. Uh, now, would it, does it mean the overall bear is gone? No, but it means that probably over the next few weeks and even the next couple months as we go into October 31st Brexit, we might start to see the US dollar gain traction over the yen, which then puts it up towards that 107, uh, 457 area. 
So uh, that being said, um, we looked at all these different currencies from around the globe. Sideways looks like it's the, um, the call, um, except for maybe the US dollar yen. I think that this one uh, has a good shot at, um, at least in the short term, having a correction unfold. Uh, if that does happen, it's one of the lesser major currencies. That means dollar strength is eking into the market. That might also cause that US dollar Swiss to um, get continue its little uh, bullish pressure. Uh, and then we'll see if that starts to hit the pound and the uh, euro. So right now it looks like we have uh, a good line on the US dollar as far as, uh, is it bullish? No, but it seems like the bull is it's having a hard time at running out of gas. The bears are gonna have a tough time with it. So for your bias on any currency cross, if it's with the dollar, Look for um, pretty much a bias towards a bullish dollar and weaker other currency cross. Um, we went over the numbers. We've gone across all the trade zones. Remember, we're coming into the holidays. This is where directional traders, you're probably, except for in this market, your opportunities are waning. Um, unless you're a range trader and you can trade the containments like the, the Nadex options, the brackets, or even some of the touch spreads, uh, those might be good opportunities to trade some of these levels that we talked about, especially since we have a lack of uh, trend direction in a couple of them. Um, remember, we talked about those swing highs and, and swing lows. Uh, be mindful of those uh, those levels, as well as these uh, highlighted numbers that we've had on these charts. You can refer to uh, the recording of the video later. And uh, that's pretty much all we got to say for the markets as, uh, for the uh, Wednesday market breakdown as we head into the end of the week, the end of the summer, and uh, the end of the month. Uh, that's another thing too. Remember, we're coming to month end, so the, all kinds of balancing might just be kind of wash out a lot of trading. So with that, um, please do your homework, look at all the markets when you make your trades, weigh your potential trades, have a plan and stay the course. I'm Teddy Kextet from Forex Trading Unlocked, and uh, you can always find out what we, I got going on at www.forex-trading-unlocked.com. You can also like, follow, and share me on Twitch. That would be great, Stock Twits and LinkedIn, and uh, always see what we have going on. And just like we talked about that Japanese market trade right there, I wrote a book, High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns, which is available on Amazon.com, on Kindle, or on Kindle version and paperback version. If you are a Kindle Unlimited uh, member, you can just read the book at your leisure whenever you want. You don't have to purchase it. Um, of course, I'd rather you purchase it. <laughs> but that being said, you can utilize the best buy and sell patterns used for over 400 years. Give yourself a competitive edge against the markets. We have a buy pattern that just went off in the US dollar yen. Irony of it all, a Japanese candlestick pattern in the US dollar yen. Uh, let's see what happens as we um, uh, rest of the week goes on. And next week, uh, hopefully, we'll be talking about a rally that has uh, uh, manifested itself. And uh, just to reiterate, reiterate, once again, we're coming into holiday markets. Be careful, all you directional traders out there. So um, look for probably, uh, I would say you're probably going to lean towards options trades for over the next week and a half or so, too, if you're going to have any opportunities. Um, outrights, I think you're going to be uh, in a world of hurt. So I'm staying away. So you do whatever you want. Good luck with everything. So that being said, thank you very much. This is the end.